This is the trick to be able to clear the hips in a downswing. It's the thing that creates these consistent shots over and over again. It's what we see all the top players do, but amateur golfers struggle so much to create it. But most amateur golfers will come to the conclusion that they're not flexible enough to open these hips. Of course, the tour players are incredibly flexible. It's not the reason why though. It's because you've got things in your golf swing that stop you from clearing your hips. So let me show you here with two swings. One with what I would always see amateur golfers do who really struggle to clear the hips. And one where I typically see movements in players who have no problem clearing the hips. Now, here we go. Let's have a look at these two swings here. So on the left is me demonstrating what golfers would normally do in their golf swing that would stop them from being able to clear the hips like you're seeing here. And on the right, this is me with my swing in moves that I have that encourage me to clear the hips easily. So because I'm using myself here as this demonstration, now why I'm doing that is because the mobility levels are the exact same because it's me. Uh, it's not two different golfers. So of course for myself as well, like I've talked about online, I have cerebral palsy. I have something that stops me from really having good mobility in my left side. And that's what we're clearing the hips, clearing that left side. So we're gonna see this is more about what your swing is doing rather than your mobility. So let's get straight into it. So this one here on the left, I see a very typical thing of what I'm demonstrating here that I see with players all the time. And that is having no depth to the hands and arms at the top of the swing. So what that means, if I draw a line from the butt end of the club, dead straight down to the ground, you can see how they're over my toes. Now, more depth means more behind, less depth means more on top. So hands over the toes, that is a lack of depth. So why this position here would cause you not to clear the hips? Because when we open up the hips and rotate, the hands follow our rotation. Now, if I clear the hips, the hands are gonna have a little down and out move, any hint of an outward move, the club's gonna get way too far out in front of me. So my body is naturally going to slow down the hips rotation and slow down any sort of rotation because that will cause the hand path to end up dropping down. So that's gonna help me neutralize club path so I can functionally hit a good golf shot, but I'm not gonna be able to clear the hips one bit at all. I'm pretty much almost square to the golf ball impact with both hips and chest. So clearing the hips would not function well from here, where also I see a little bit of a steep shaft. So this is something we see with golfers who have a lack of depth at the top also, but golfers can have the shaft being vertical without having the lack of depth for the hands and arms. Why this will stop you from clearing the hips is because again, if you turn and you rotate, you're gonna maintain that shaft angle and it's gonna really then start to get out in front of you and then you're not gonna be able to present that golf club to the golf ball to hit a functional shot. Your body is always trying to reorganize itself to hit a functional shot to target. A lack of depth and a steep shaft will prevent you from clearing the hips because it won't get you to hit the ball to target. Shutting off your rotation of your hips and your chest, letting those hands drop, which will happen on its own from there, will get you hitting the ball to your target, but not very often, and it'll be extremely inconsistent. So a golfer here who is trying to clear their hips, let's say they're doing all the drills in the world to be able to do this, you're never gonna be able to do it. You're never gonna clear the hips from doing these faults specifically. Open club face is another one that can really make you have a really diminished hip turn. So, okay, let's have a look here on the right. Let's get up to the top and let's have a look. So, let's get up to the top there. So we see a lot more depth now. You can see if we draw a line from button of the club down to the ground, it's roughly around the ankle region, which is just about all right. I'm normally a tiny bit in front of my ankles, but definitely a lot more depth to be functional. Okay, so when I turn my hips and clear my hips here, the club is still gonna go down and out. It's not gonna go dead straight down and it's not gonna go dead straight out. So I can now turn those hips and that club is not gonna then fly out. So you can see now those hips are clearing. The club shaft is also shallowing out nicely here. So there's no steep shaft. So this is now I've got the green light to be able to continue to rotate and turn the hips here. I can just continue to turn, clear those hips as you can see. You can see a little bit of a natural head swivel is happening there from my free rotation that I'm getting. And this is a much better place to be able to clear the hips. So the trick to clearing the hips is about having your swing in the right environment. We don't wanna have this lack of depth 
because our hip rotation is going to shut off. It's going to be unable because we're not going to hit a good golf shot if we clear our hips with that lack of depth in the deep shaft. We need a little bit more depth in this explanation here, and we need a little bit better of a shaft angle, a little bit shallower coming down like we can see, to be able to clear those hips. And we can see our impact, vastly different amount of hip turn. Remember, same golfer, this is me. Even a golfer with a disability that stops them from having as much rotation as I'd like going through the golf ball, still able to get the hip rotation because it's clearing the hips is about your swing. It's not necessarily about your mobility. So like we could see there, you have to have your swing in a functional place to be able to do this movement. So with the golfer like we were describing there who has the poor things in the swing with me demonstrating those poor moves, if I turn in the downswing with that lack of depth and that steep shaft and I cleared those hips, that club's just gonna get incredibly in front of me. I'm gonna really present an ultra steep angle of attack. I'm not gonna hit the ball to my target. So that's what we'll see time and time again with players is they'll come to a conclusion because they're not clearing their hips, but they're, they're just not flexible enough to be able to do it. Yes, they are. The amount you clear your hips, how open you get might be dependent on course athleticism, but we can all clear the hips to different degrees. So this is where that lack of depth, arms really high, or the steep shaft will absolutely cause it like we described there. So we need to get the swing into the environment. We need to get you to a spot like we saw with what to do, with me demonstrating the good stuff, to where when you clear your hips in your downswing, Nothing bad will happen to your golf club as you're going down, which will cause a bad shot. We want to have everything align itself to hit a good shot, like we described, the good depth, shallow shaft, club face being square being another important one. And then we can work on drills to be able to fix it. But you've got to figure out the reason why or what it is in your golf swing that's stopping you from clearing your hips and then we'll get to it from there. And that's when we get to this little practice session I'm gonna talk about here to be able to work on it efficiently to clear your hips properly. So, okay, let's say I'm the golfer who has the lack of depth at the top. So they've got this vertical high position of their left arm and their hand. So if that is me, what I gotta do from there, I've gotta work on that area and I've gotta work on clearing the hips also. So what I would do here, I would then go and do a drill like so. I will go and get something like here, like a swing plate. So it's essentially a very long alignment stick. And you're gonna see here how having something like this and having it at an angle where it's kind of just above my right shoulder there or in line with it, it's very hard for me to be able to have that high left arm position because I'll just hit the stick. So if I'm turning, getting good rotation in the backswing, which brings the hands and arms round as I'm swinging up, I should have no issue in not hitting this. So this is working on that root cause area. If you want one of these, there's a link in the description and there'll be a discount code as well to get this training aid. So let's say that is me. Okay, I'm working on my root cause issue there. So, okay. Let me swing underneath this. I'm gonna have that better left arm, which is gonna enable me to be able to clear my hips. But unless I'm working on clearing the hips with another drill, I'm not gonna be able to. A lot of you assume that once you get the root cause and once you fix that issue, that all the stuff will just fall into place. I wish the golf swing was that easy, I really do. But it's not. What you need to do now is work on a drill for the hip stuff as well. So again, you've got to work on root cause and you've got to work on effect. If you can work on both at the same time, brilliant, like we're going to show you here. So I've got something there, swinging underneath this, getting good turn. That's going to get me that good depth, get me in a good spot again, if this was my problem. And now, what I want to do, I've got this alignment stick through my belt buckles, a little bit on the right, a lot on the left. This is going to be now my hip turn, how I'm going to gauge how much turn I'm getting. So when I'm getting up here, Missing the stick, absolutely. Now, with this stick here, I want it to go down and around. That's me now clearing my hips. So if I can swing underneath this in the backswing, get this stick to going down and around. Now I'm clearing my hips, but I'm swinging in an environment that makes me do it and hit a good golf shot also. So let's do it here. And then guys, it's all a matter of repetitions. So it's a thing I think I say, which I think probably makes a lot of golfers lose hope a little bit, but it's just the reality of you know, ingraining a different motor pattern, it's time, time. You, nothing is instant in the golf swing. Maybe on the rare occasions, I've seen it before of players making the change very fast, but it is so unbelievably rare. So just assume it's gonna take a long time. And this is gonna take a lot of time and a lot of practice to be able to do. 
So if I was this golfer, we're getting that left arm more around, not hitting this stick, doing it via a good turn, having this stick going down around to get the clearing of the hips. I want that happening in transition as well and continuing in the downswing. Then I would really just keep going until I get it into my golf swing. However long it takes, it takes. I like the analogy, which I've been using quite often now with students of someone pulling some food in the oven and they're really hungry. They're really, really hungry. They've just put some food in the oven. The oven for it to cook, you know, that food to cook is about 40 minutes. But this golfer or this person who just wants to eat something doesn't want to wait the 40 minutes. So they take it out in 10 minutes, assume it's going to be cooked, they get sick. That's what most of you do in regards to this. And they'll assume that that food that they've put in is just not good food. It's something that's wrong. It wasn't that they undercooked it. It was just the food's bad. That's a lot of you when it comes to work on a drill. You don't give it enough time to cook. You need to continue to practice and practice until it is cooked. And when it's cooked in the golfing sense, that is having it ingrained into your subconscious. So that just takes a ton of practice. Let's do another one. Boom, there we go. And then we'll have it into the swing. Don't take that food out early. Don't make yourself sick. And that means do not stop practicing it way before you could even get close to getting into your swing. It takes a lot longer than you think it does. So if you need any help identifying your root cause to this, there's a link in the description for online lessons with myself on Skillist. That's why I give all my lessons now is over on Skillist. So go over there. We'll absolutely do some good work and get you moving how we want to with the golf swing, get you producing the golf shots you know you can produce so we can have a great season. But it's also, if you want to watch more videos, there is a course on rotation in the downswing on Skillist, on the app version of Skillist, which talks about all what we talked about this lesson environments in your goal swing, root causes, variables, stuff that you need in your goal swing to be able to have good movements. You need to know this because it ain't just as easy as doing a drill. So if you enjoyed this video, click that like button. If you want more golf instruction just like this, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button too to be notified every time I put out a video.